Paul here, Sam. Welcome to part three of the Tamiya Honda NSX video build. Before we get going today, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So we're going to start with um, assembling, priming, painting, weathering all our running gear and the chassis. Uh, and then we're going to pop our interior on that we did in the last video and uh, paint our wheels as well. So I've cut out a lot of footage. There's about four hours of this and I didn't want to have up sitting there watching me paint as I always say um, so I have kind of skipped through quite a bit but I've got quite a lot of content into the video with that respect now with the wheels I don't know we're gonna see what happens there I'll let you see the video and I'll have a little bit of a chat about it at the end um, I'm kind of liking what I did but I'm not so we'll have a little look and see what you think so let's get straight at it Right then, straight in, we've already assembled some of the engine components. There's several components to take off the sprues, clean up, glue together. I don't want to show all this because you've seen it done hundreds of times before and probably done it yourself hundreds of times. So a simple bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, glue the parts together, make sure they're all assembled in the right order, and away we go. I've mounted all the parts onto cocktail sticks using various methods, including super glue, grips, white tack, you name it, I've used it. And we've got some UMP black primer through the UMP Apex. 0.35 needle, about 25 PSI. I'm going to give everything a couple of light coats of black primer in preparation for our base colours. So as always, if you are using any primer, especially uh, water-based as well, um, make sure that airbrush is clean. Nine times out of ten, if you have an issue spraying anything really, I put money on it, your airbrush is clean. Even sometimes when you think it's clean, it's not. Surface prep's also uh, key to this as well. Make sure you get any greasy fingerprints off where you've been handling it. It's all well and good washing all your sprues before you start building. You'll do more damage handling the parts as you're building and then spraying it. I've got proof of this. If you go back to my Aston Martin video, you can see a fingerprint I left on the interior. And you can see exactly where the, the primer doesn't bond. We primed the wheels in grey UMP primer off camera because I wasn't 100% sure what we were doing with these yet, but we'll get to those a little bit later. And we've got loads of other parts to do as well. So I kind of separated them into separate colours. Anything that needs a metallic colour is on this job lot together, and anything that's going black or a different colour is on the other one. Makes life a bit easier when painting, so you're not sitting there sorting through all the colours. And like I say, a couple of different coats. Again, all the different angles or recesses and what have you. Not putting it on heavy, we're just misting it on. I'm going to move this camera angle as well. I don't know what's happened here. I think it's moved a little bit. It seems to have moved back a touch. Um, it needs to go back towards the booth a little bit. So I'm not quite sure what's happened there. But I'll rectify that for the next video. As you can see, we put a cocktail stick for any holes we can. We've got some alligator clips, some photo, uh, photo etch, some CA glue, some white tack. Um, all various methods are holding everything on as long as it's got it securely and you can paint it without touching it it might, makes life so much easier um, to do even if it comes loose like this you can still grab it quick and pop it on before you hit it with primer and there we go so let the primer dry overnight we've got some AK Interactive Matte Aluminium one of my favourite colours that along with the Tamiya LP Matte or Flat Aluminium I think it's called absolutely stunning colours they level really nicely and just give a real nice metallic finish. That is on a look through the instructions, making sure what I'm going to spray is actually going metallic. And we're going to just put some light coats down, building it up. So this is the apex with a 0.2mm fine needle conversion. Again, I'm out of shot, I do apologise, but you can see what I'm doing. Um, we've got the 0.2mm fine needle conversion set where we threw uh, 15, well, 18 psi roughly. Like I said, I'm going to put about two or three light coats on. This is enamel, so it can take a bit of abuse, and it does like to go on a little bit heavier. But for the first coat, just mist it on all round, get it all evenly covered, and you can come back in later with some heavier coats. Like I say, I will rectify this. I'm not 100% sure what's happened, but that camera is definitely lifted um, at the front. There used to be more of the spray booth in at the back. Again, if you're not sure 
go back to your instructions, have a double check. You can always go through with a marker and circle everything that's in a metallic colour or a different colour. But for me, I'm just confirming what I already thought. As you can see, the coverage is really good on this paint. It's beautiful stuff. Don't hose it on though. Just put a light coat on. Let it sit for five minutes. Then come back. Give it another coat and build it up. But the coverage is phenomenal on it. It's very, very nice paint. I've been using this colour for a long, long time on the cars. And I highly recommend it's worth a go. It does stink. It is enamel. It is very smelly. But it does dry very fast as well. It's not your typical enamel where it takes days and days. Zero paint ceramic grey. Now... This is a bit of a point of contention, is that the right word? It works, this stuff. I think if you mix Tamiya metallic black um, with like a flat black, I think that works better. I've used that before on a couple of the bikes. I think it gives a more subtle effect. I think the pigments are a little bit large in this, but we're going to use it. It was there. It's a convenience product. It just needs a quick mix up. When you are mixing this up, put your mixer in. Don't switch it on at first. Give it a good stare around and angle the pot backwards so you're not hitting the ball bearing inside. You can see the pigments going on, the flake. And I think it's a tad too big, personally. So, next time we do ceramic breaks, I will use my other method of mixing paint. And we'll see which one we prefer. But again, it's zero paint. We've got black UMP primers from drying overnight. It'll be perfectly fine. Same um, lacquer. Um, obviously because it's lacquer, we're through the Apex 2.3 again, 18 PSI, and we're going to do a couple of light coats. Can't put the stuff on heavy because it will react with the plastic. Once we're happy with that, we'll pop those to one side to dry. LP5 semi-gloss black, so this is the other sprue. sprue. This is the other holder, part holder worth of parts that we had. So most of those are semi-gloss black, and again it's pre-mixed, you can see it in the bottle there. It's thinned about 70-30 in the thinner uh, favour. 0.35 apex 18 psi again and again a couple of light coats because it's already primed in black it doesn't take a lot to get coverage and you can give this some stick it will go on a little bit thicker and don't hose it on but you can put it on a little bit thicker and again just work your way through your parts if you're st stuck just stop now like i have just quick reference in the instructions make sure it is what it is just give everything a good couple of light coats it's a good painting session you can do all this together in one go. This is probably about an hour's worth of painting for me. We give five, ten minutes to each coat. Let it dry a bit, come back, pop it on, and then make sure we're all evenly covered. So, Gravity Colors Gloss Black. So, this is enamel. And the idea of this is the base for their chrome, which does look to work fantastic. I did a very quick test while I was doing this. Uh, but I put the paint on a little bit too thick. The chrome effect looked really good. So what we're going to do, we're going to mist on. This is going to take a few coats because of all the angles. And I don't want to absolutely hose it on. So we're going to give this three or four coats at least. Get all the recesses, all the spokes in the back, everywhere. And get a nice glossy black finish. Because if we don't keep the gloss black, we can always change our mind and come back and do them silver. We've already got a fantastic base there ready except the silver paint but I am kind of liking them black have a look at the end when we get the car assembled see what you think and let me know in the comments your opinions so again we will fix this camera next time it has moved 100% because you can obviously see more of the spray booth so these are our discs these have been drying again overnight you can see the metallic flake in there we're going to mask them off we're using some Azu tape we're going to mask off our calipers, prime them in pink, and then we're going to spray them in a gloss red. So some careful masking with Azu tape, cocktail stick, and then Tamiya tape in a minute. Again, there's four of these to do. It's one of those boring jobs, but it'll be worth it in the end because these calipers and discs are highly visible through these wheels. So multitude of colors you could do the calipers. I've gone with red. I think it'll accent the body color well. There's a couple of decals to put on as well. And we need to paint the center hub as well. So we'll get to that in a little bit. So careful masking, as you can see. We don't want any bleed through, of, especially the primer and pink. 
all the red. I'm going to keep the demarcation nice. Love the AZ tape, absolutely fantastic. As good a quality as Tamiya tape, but already pre cut in 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 1, 1.5, 2, and 2.5 mil sizes. Absolutely invaluable stuff. And how on earth I coped before we had this, I do not know. Again, you get this from us at umpretail.com. Links in the description down below. Big long list of products. And there we go. So there's the multitude of all the fine masking done. Now we can come in with some Tamiya 6mm. And mask off the rest. Always detack any masking tape. It's a good practice full stop to have. Careful masking, as I say, we don't want any paint bleed through onto our nice, freshly painted discs. You can also hand paint this if you wanted for speed. You will get a much better finish by spraying it, especially if it being a gloss red, it's going to be highly, highly visible. So, a few pieces of tape, and we're all done. So, we've got a bit of detail painting to do on the suspension, running gear components. We've got some Vallejo Silver. Completely straight out of the bowl. It's a brilliant brush paint. So we've got a Winsor Newton Series 7 brush. And some nice, a nice hour or two of therapeutic painting to do. There is something nice and calming about using a brush. Don't do it all that often. Literally for this most of the time. But it is quite nice to go back to your roots and basics. Nice careful brush painting. will highlight all that nice detail. Again, plenty of components to do. The majority of it is semi-gloss black, but there are other components to paint as well. The key with the larger part is go over the paint as little as possible. So once you put a coat on, don't keep running over it because it's going to dry and it's going to start to ball up on itself and dry crusty and what have you. So once you've gone over it, as long as there's not a ton of excess paint, leave it be. Let it dry and if need be, come back for a second coat later on. Windsor Newton brushes, they are fantastic. They're not, not cheap, they're not that expensive though. Between seven and ten pounds for your typical modeling brush. Take care of them, they last a long, long time. This one here is about five years old and gets absolutely abused. It really does not get taken care of. It's like my beta brush, it's just used for anything and everything. Clean, and chuck back in the pot when it's used. I've got some brand new ones there, ever need a really good quality new brush. But this one does get used and abused. God knows how many cars it's painted now, but it's a lot. So testament to how good they are. It doesn't even get looked after, and it still holds its point fantastic. And paints great. Another set of brushes I like are the Tamiya ones. Um, the black handle ones, very, very good. You get a couple of flats and a very nice pointed detail brush. Well worth a look. Few last components got suspension components do we're holding the uh, part with tweezers so we're not getting any fingers in the paint and again nice careful painting to give us a nice crisp look at the end the little model there i'm not a fan of it for airbrushing for brush painting especially the metallics it seems to work really really well it covers well, dries nice, it's well pigmented. I don't rate it for airbrushing personally, but as a brush paint, it works pretty decent. A few little clamps on the hoses. And that's the majority of the silver part all painted. Not too long to do, a couple of coats, a bit of time, a bit of care. Leo model colour now, black. So we've added a little bit to our colour cup. We're going to add a dot of water. I find I've learned what the colour thins best with water personally. Dries a bit quicker than any other thinner. Just want one drop. There we go. We're just going to soak up a little bit of excess. We don't need quite that much water. Grab our brush again. And again, give it a mix up. I 
got some fine detail painting to do. So get rid of the majority of the paint on the brush. You use the side of the pot or a tissue or whatever. And I'm just going to carefully follow the outline and paint the edge of the. I think these are intercoolers. I'm pretty sure they're intercoolers. Might be wrong. They cover the radiators. Coverage on this is even better than metallics. It's fantastic. These are heavily pigmented brush paints, and they always need thinning, always. Um, but the coverage is phenomenal on them. They're very, very good paints. The lifespan's not great on them. Again, the water-based paints keep them out of sunlight, keep them out of excess heat, and you'll get a bit longer out of them. I've had this bottle for a couple of years now. It's still going strong. And again, take your time. Some nice, careful painting. And the result will show at the end. So there's no need to mask and airbrush everything. Something like this is a bit of a, a pain in the backside to mask. So, like I said, it's nice to get back to the brushes every now and then. As long as you're neat and careful, thin that paint properly, you'll get a decent finish and it'll look half good. Again, tweezers being utilised to hold the part. Otherwise, as you're manhandling it, you're going to get a fingerprint in everywhere, and we don't want to do that. And there we go, job done. We'll pop that to one side to dry. There's another one to do as well, but we will do that off camera because it's extraordinarily boring watching somebody paint everything. A few other parts to do. And we can start assembling it. So the colour call outs for the kit majority call majority call out for a lot of silver and black. That that is the basic colour of this. So that's what we've done. We'll highlight it a bit more in a bit with a panel line wash. But for now, we're just going to basic colours down. We'll get it assembled, then we'll give it a wash, and then we can eye things up and see if it needs a bit more detail painting later on. So we've got the yellow deluxe materials rocket super glue. Now we've added a few dabs. We're going to start assembling um, the subframes and the suspension components and get them all onto the chassis of the car in preparation for the engine and the wheels and what have you. So rolling sitting here watching me glue everything while I waffle on. We're going to speed this up a little bit, add a little bit of music, and we'll come back when we're done.
Okay, so that's the chassis mostly assembled, our interiors in place, the engines in place, and we're going to highlight it all now with a Tamiya black panel line wash. We're just going to allow this to flow by capillary action to all the recesses, gaps, raised areas. We'll let it dry, come back, wipe off the excess, and hopefully add a little bit more depth and interest to this engine. Now, it is mostly a silver mass of paint. You aren't going to see an awful lot of it through the engine cover, so I'm not overly concerned. But if we add a little bit of detail, hopefully where we can see it, add a little bit more visual interest to it and make it look less boring. So it's enamel-based paint, the um, panel line wash from Tamiya. So give it half an hour, an hour to dry. We've got some Sands Odor, uh, Winsor Newton Odorless Mineral Spirits on a cotton bud. I'm just going to go around and remove all the excess until we're happy and we're left with that nice washed look behind. It's a good wash, one of my favourites, especially for the cars. Um, it does work very, very well. Available a few colours. I think there's about six colours in total. Grey, there's a couple of browns, a black. Um, not an awful lot, but yeah, enough for what we need. So, we've got the brakes, dipping Pride UMP Pink Primer, mixed with white a little bit. We've got some Mr. Colour Red, and the reason we're using this is it's mixed. It's been there for ages now. And I use it on the brakes. So we're through the Apex 0.35 needle, 18 psi again. This is the Indemus Hobby level and thinner. Again, we will sort this camera. We'll get it fixed for next time. A bit rusty this week. It's been not a great month. As if you've watched my bench updates, you will have been moaning. So kind of, uh, yeah, the old mojo was lacking a bit. But this kind of helps bear it back in. So we're going to chuck a co couple of coats of this on. Let it dry for five, ten minutes, and then come back, put another coat on, until we've got a nice, deep, gloss red colour, as you can see, we have here now. Again, lacquer base, you can give it a bit of stick, give it a little bit of punishment. What we want to do is just get enough on there to give us that nice, glossy look. And there we go. There's two done. Do the other two off camera. And here we are unmasking them. Absolutely perfect masking job. There's no bleed through, no missed colours, no spray, overspray, anything. As you can see, they are very, very striking with that carbon colour against the red. Very nice. We're going to mount that back up on a cocktail stick because we need to detail paint the centres now. But all that time spent masking, you know what, it was 10 minutes of that. Well worth doing. You wouldn't get as good a finish using uh, a brush. So, time well spent. So, centre hubs to do. We've got the Vallejo model black again. We're going to very finely and carefully paint the centres following the edge of the plastic as a guide. And again, a little bit of a laborious job. Got some careful hand brushing again. We'll see this done neatly. Four to do in total, so you got a yeah, you got a ten minutes or so of hand painting to do. Thin the paint exactly like we did before. A little drop of water, mix it up, put it on. Don't keep going over the paint. Put a coat on. Make sure it's evenly spread. Leave it to dry. Come back, reapply if you need it, and then we can tie it all in at the end. Should we need to with a wash? Any excess paint because we're putting this over lacquer, we can remove it with a cotton bud. With a little bit of water on or a Vallejo airbrush cleaner is one of my favourites because it's useless to clean your airbrush, but it will take water-based paint off a lacquer paint without damaging the lacquer underneath. So that's all I use it for. Can't remember where I got that tip. I think it might have been John, scale model medic. Long, long time ago. It does work well. It's a technique I've used for a long, long time. So like I say, a bit of a laborious job. A lot of this is, sadly. It's a lot of it's rinse, repeat, carry on. But this is what makes it modelling. So the calibers are drying now for about six hours. Like a paint just dry rather fast. We've got the NSX decals that come with the kit. There's one for each caliper. You just need to centrise them. Typical decal application. Pop them on. They're de decent decals in your Tamiya decals. They're not too bad. Um, they come off the back of paper nice and easy. They go on easy. They don't usually need hitting with UMP normal, with strong occasionally. So just take your time, get them lined up properly, get rid of that excess moisture, 
and then we'll come back and hit it with some UMP decal solution in a second. Four in total to do again. So there we go, once we're all on, get your decal solution. I would recommend using the holder, mine's out of shot. Don't leave your bottle there because you will knock it over. We do a whole range of 3D printed products for our holders for our products. Again, you can find the link in the description. Polycaps, all the hubs now to do. Four in total again. We've got a polycap in each one. Make sure to push fully home. They can be a little bit tricky to get in. So take your time again. Pop them in. Grab the appropriate caliper. Make sure you've got the right one. Look at your instructions. Refer to the angle and what goes where. There's normally little keyways on the back. But they can go on wrong occasionally. So check. Double check before you commit to gluing. And a test fit is recommended as well. That way you definitely know it fits before you commit to gluing. Because we're going to see a glue of these on. So once they're on, it can cause a bit of damage to remove them. But I'm happy with that. Looks like the right one to me. So we'll grab some of our Loctite Perfect Pen. Add a little dab around the actual hub itself. Just checking an email. Yeah, it's still there. A few dabs around the edge. And again, make sure you put your polycap in. I've done this so many times. I built them all up, put the wheels on. Thought that's a bit loose. Looked at the bench. There's a polycap sat on the bench. Quite often on the Tammy kits, they are a tight fit. So once they're in, they're in. But it's still easy to leave them out. Or if it's on a different type of kit, they can fall out. So you really need to check um, that they are in the right place. And there we go, one down, three to go. There we go, we've got all those done. Now it's time to pop them in place. So again, referring to our instructions, taking our time. They clip in uh, at the top, there's a little hole at the top, and like a little recess at the bottom, so a dab of glue at the bottom. We're going to get our steering rack on as well while we can. It's a little bit tricky to do, it needs to turn them the right way. There we go. Once you're happy, push it in, and then we can repeat for all the others. So that's all four of those on. Pretty simple, straightforward. Just follow your instructions. We've got this chrome part on top, which I think is the engine intake. I'm pretty sure it is. And this is where those hoses go before we detail painted a bit of silver on. So we've CA glued it in place. Checked it fitted. It was the right way. You need to detail paint a little bit of it in black as well. In my last pictures, in part two, I did notice a few fingerprints on the dashboard. Just greasy fingerprints, nothing in the paint, but it was showing in my pictures. So a little bit of um, moisture is what we'll call it on the cotton bud. I didn't lick it then at all, honestly. And just wipe over the dash, then turn it around to the dry side and just wipe it all over. Again, this is one of those important things. You'll see this through the windscreen. So if you've got a big greasy fingerprint there, wipe it off before you're done. And then before you commit to actually... Uh, put the body shell on, have a final look, make sure there's no excess wash, because again, there was a touch of excess wash on those seats from last time, we got rid of the fingerprints, detail painted a few of the little parts inside, I'm very happy how that interior looks, with a flock in, with those beautiful tan leather seats, it's come out really well, very happy with how it looks, and as you'll see at the end, it's a nice contrast between the red and the black wheels of the car. So once that's done, we've got the I'm assuming boost hoses, they've got to be, it must be um, intercoolers. Um, I'm probably completely wrong as somebody will tell me, but I'm sure those radiators are intercoolers and they're the boost hoses coming in and out. Um, but I'm probably wrong, it's probably, I don't know, the flenum for the flux capacitor on the thing or something. But again, all the wheel arches now, for them again, a couple of dabs of Siego, again, refer to those instructions. It took me about a minute to figure out and just double check out everything the right way. Test fit them. Make sure they fit before you commit to glue. Once you're happy, glue them all in place. Wheels. So I've left these dry now for about four days. It's enamel paint. It takes a little bit longer because you've got to push a tire over the edge. It's very easy to take the paint off the edge. So let them dry and don't let your fingers touch them. Like that. Don't do that. 
but we had to push the tire on too far. I'm pretty confident it's dry, and it is. So, black wheels, you'll see it in a minute. I do think it looks good. I just don't know if it would look better silver. But we'll see. We'll decide. So the tyres are handed. It does show the direction they go. You've got front and rear wheels, front and rear tyres, and they are handed. So follow the directions. You can see on the instructions, you get a side profile and a face on profile. So you can see which way the tyres go. Get them on the right way. And you'll be all good. So like I say, something we need to think about is this wheel colour. I do like it. I think it does look good. I'll put the body on in a minute. I have a few pictures at the end because um, I was just curious to see what it looked like. And I think with the red calipers, the beautiful red paintwork, that lovely tan interior, I think the black really sets it off with the carbon. Um, I think silver, whilst it would look good, I think it'll not clash, but I think it just draws your eye from everything else. So I think we're going to stick with the black. Again, as I said, let me know your comments, uh, your opinions in the comments down below. Should I stick with black or should we go silver? If we do silver, it's going to be a pretty high shine silver because of the gloss black base. But I kind of like this. With those red calipers showing through, if we move them around properly, they do look very good. So there we go. There's all our interior, running gear done, wheels, calipers, discs. What have you. It's a shame most of that engine will be hidden. If it wasn't hidden, I would have detail painted it a lot more. But we really aren't going to see a lot of this through that engine cover at the back. But we're very happy how this is gone. Interior is fantastic. And with the body shell on. Yeah, I think those black wheels look good. With the carbon skirt and the carbon roof. There's other black accents that are going to go on it too. I think it's really going to tie it all together. So I think we'll be sticking with the black wheels. Let me know your thoughts. You can really see that beautiful carbon effect on the side skirts and the roof as well. This is going to look absolutely stunning when it's done. Really will. Once we flat that paintwork, get rid of those floors, give it a nice high polish. Get all other components in for part four. This is going to look beautiful. Really looking forward to this one. It's a very understated car and kit because I've not seen a single one of these built anywhere. And I think the box art doesn't do it justice, but yeah. I'm happy with that. It's a very menacing stance, and this is going to look really good. There we go, then. Um, not much an interesting video. Uh, I always found it a bit boring to film um, because it's just painting and gluing stuff together. There's nothing really magnificent to it, but it's a part of the build, and it's another step out of the way. So we've got one more part left, which hopefully we'll get to uh, end of this week, uh, maybe next week, the weekend, um, and we'll get it all assembled, uh, polished up and finished hopefully so the wheels um, gloss black looks good I think it suits the car because it goes with the carbon I don't know if silver would look better I am not sure I'm really on the fence about it at the minute either way it can be done it'll take me about 10 minutes to spray them um, but I don't know let me know your thoughts and opinions in the chat and uh, we'll have a little think I do like the black I think it will go well with it I think it highlights all those black panels on the car so yeah so part four hopefully in a week or so um we'll get that up we can straight on polishing that bodywork get those floors out of it um getting everything on there there's still quite a bit to do quite a bit of work so it'll be another lengthy video next time so i hope you stuck around um yes so we were going to finish next time and then i'm going to build one or two projects for myself hopefully by then the volt decals will be out for the mustang and we can crack on with that build We'll see. If not, we'll pick a different build to do in the meantime, and we'll figure that out as we go. So thanks for watching today. As always, make sure you sub to the channel. Make sure you click the bell notification symbol. Leave a comment as well. I do read and reply to all the comments. Give the video a thumbs up for us as well. Check out Intercessor Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, where you can get nearly everything I've shown me using in this video from products, solutions, kits, anything and everything. The link's in the description, click on it, it takes you a big long list over on the forum and you can find nearly everything I use in there, uh, quick and easy. Uh, check out the Live the Bench page and Off-Air Hangout group for the live and Off-Air Hangouts and check out my Paul ISM modelling page as well where all my personal modelling work is shared. Thanks for watching today, I'll catch you next time for part 4, take care everybody.